Hey everybody, what's up and welcome back to the garden. Today we are going to be taking a look at some of our dahlia tubers and begin the process of pre-sprouting those. Now, pre-sprouting is not totally necessary. Um, some people choose to just plant their tubers in the ground and for some people that works fine. For me personally, I don't trust my tubers enough. I don't trust my yard enough. I have a very heavy clay. I have lots of snails that like to munch on my tubers. So I like to be in full control of what's going on. You know, especially since so many dahlia tubers can be so expensive. Um, you best bet I'm going to be taking care of these things as best as I can. Uh, first and foremost, there are several ways to do this. And disclaimer, full disclaimer, I am not a dahlia growing expert. There are tons of people, um, specifically in the Pacific Northwest, that are experts at growing dahlias. You know, I'm down here in the south. Dahlias ain't really our thing down here. Uh, sometimes it gets a little too hot. They don't do as well as they should. But I do think that everybody can enjoy growing them and enjoy growing something new in their garden. So if you have any helpful comments, feel free to leave them below in a nice and constructive and helpful manner. And I would love to hear them. Uh, first thing we want to do, obviously, is we want to decide when we are going to get these started. My last frost date here is about the first week of April. So I'm going to get these started about a month. Uh, I'm a little bit late, a month before my last frost date. A lot of people choose to take dahlia cuttings to propagate their dahlias and get more dahlia plants for the growing season. If you do plan on doing that, you will want to start sooner. Hopefully I will have a video coming on taking dahlia cuttings. It just depends on how things go. Things are a little bit crazy right now, so we'll see how that goes. But if I plan to take cuttings, I usually start them around sometime in February indoors. For the sake of this video, we will be pre-sprouting them outdoors using our winter sowing low tunnel or a winter sowing container. Both of these methods work really, really well. I'm here in zone 6B, um, bordering on 7 here in Kentucky to give you some reference. So in the spring and March, we still get some cool temperatures, some nights below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Those are the nights we're going to have to watch out for. I'll get into that here in a second. Uh, the first thing we want to do is choose some nice, healthy tubers. Now, um, you know, of course, you can save your tubers. You'll see a little bit later I have some tubers that I have saved. You'll know they're mine because I didn't cut off the stem all the way because I have bad tuber saving habits, but that's besides the point. Or, of course, you can buy them. When you are buying them, you're likely buying them one of two ways, through a reseller or through um, just a privately owned farm. Uh, both ways I have their benefits. You can generally tell between the two. Uh, resellers will have clumps, large clumps of dahlias sold to you, and individuals usually just have one single tuber. There are pros and cons with both. Obviously, the clump may seem like you're getting more, but oftentimes, you know, the individual tuber is a lot healthier and somebody actually cares. You know, it's not just a large, you know, ship them out. Um, somebody actually cares. I do prefer ordering from just individuals, not to mention it's supporting small business. And I've learned over the years firsthand how much of a huge impact just supporting one family can have on that family. It's really uh, something kind of cool that I think we've gotten away from as a people a lot. Anyway, I am going to look for nice, healthy tubers. To do this, I, I want to make sure that that tuber is nice and firm and plump. When I touch it with my hands, it's got no give in it. It has very little wrinkles. Um, deep wrinkles are especially are bad. Um, if you give that a squeeze and it sounds papery and it's hollow and it kind of crumbles in your hands, just go ahead and ditch it, toss it in the garbage. Um, I've received tubers like this before. Uh, you guys might remember that strawberry ice tuber I got last year. What a joke. Um, anyway, we want tubers that are nice and plump. After we look at that, we want to look at the neck of the tuber. That's just the part that connects the top and the actual tuber itself, I guess. The big uh, plump part. I don't know how to explain it. That neck should be nice and plump as well. Or most importantly, that neck should not be damaged in any way. Um, occasionally, if the neck is damaged, it will be fine, but any kind of severe damage, you're not going to get any kind of growth out of that tuber. So another thing to look out for. I want to make sure our tuber has eyes. 
Uh, I think the dahlia growers say their tubers are blind when they don't have any eyes. Sometimes uh, some varieties I think take a little bit longer to develop eyes than others. Uh, so if you look at your tuber directly after pulling it out of the ground for storage and it doesn't have any eyes yet, don't freak out those out. Wait and give them a chance. But if they are arriving in spring and they still don't have any eyes, I go ahead and pot them up, but um, I start worrying about them a little bit. Anyway, last but certainly not least, we want to make sure that our tubers are a sufficient size. Now, this is where it varies wildly, okay? Depending on the varieties, some dahlia plants make gigantic tubers, just loads and loads of gigantic tubers. Some do not. Some make little tiny things. Some make, you know, barely any at all. So that's where you really have to kind of pay attention. Ideally, a good sized tuber. I like to make sure it's at least as thick as maybe, you know, a washable marker, like the markers you use when you're a kid in school to doodle. Sometimes I will get one that's a little bit thinner than that, but generally um, that's, I think, is a good guideline to make sure that you are going to get a really nice plant. Um, as much as length, length doesn't seem to really matter too much as long as it's a nice, robust plant that we are putting into the ground. So, you have a couple of options when it comes to pre-sprouting these. I've seen a lot of people pre-sprout these in moist peat moss. I personally haven't done that. Um, maybe I'll do that in the future and I can make a video about it. In the past, I've put my tubers down into just, you know, plastic cups with drainage holes at the bottom straight up and down. That has also worked phenomenally. I've put those plastic cups right into the low tunnel, the winter sowing low tunnel, and the humidity in there and the warmth in there uh, is perfect for getting these tubers growing and getting them active. If you do not have a winter sowing low tunnel, I've also done this exact same method using milk jugs, using the milk jugs. I prepare the milk jugs just as we did with winter sowing. Tuber in the milk jug, I tape it around the center. I set it outside. Uh, where it can get rained on and that extra warmth and heat will allow that to grow. What I've started doing in recent years now that I've got these seed starting trays is I am just simply laying the tubers in the seed starting trays flat and I'm covering them with soil and allowing them to sprout that way. Obviously I should mention that these also go in the low tunnel, the winter sowing low tunnel. Now the reason I have actually grown to prefer this way is for one, it doesn't use any cups. I'm trying to cut down on my use of plastic. Of course we all know that is an issue. Uh, not only that, it allows them to lay flat. Laying flat is essentially how I plant them in the garden so the stems will be nice and strong and they won't topple over and break off and all that stuff. So I like to get them started laying nice and flat as well. And that's something that the cups and sometimes the milk jugs don't necessarily allow, depending on the size of the tuber, is for us to lay it flat. So I think that's really the main reason that I prefer this. Uh, laying them out in trays is also a lot easier if I plan to take cuttings of them. They're just right there. I don't have to open containers and yada yada and all this stuff. It's just easier to take cuttings from them this way. Now, of course, you can start these indoors on a heat mat with, you know, grow lights and or in a warm sunny windowsill. You can of course do that. I personally like to get the head start outside just so everything is already hardened off. Everything is ready to go. Everything is adjusted to my garden. This is personal preference. There are tons of ways to do it. I don't think any way is wrong necessarily or right. Um, but you have to find what works for you. So in doing this with the winter sowing containers and the milk jugs, here in March I still do get cold temperatures. These dahlias are not tender to frost. The tubers themselves, I think, are hardy to USDA zone 8 or 9. Don't quote me on that. It might vary depending upon variety. If by chance I do have a very light frost and they are in the hoop house or the low tunnel or in a milk jug container, they will be fine as long as they have not started to grow. Uh, once they have started to grow, that's really when you're going to be needing to watch the containers and watch the temperatures. If you have dahlia growth, um, you know, and the temperatures are going to drop below 32 or you got a frost coming, you know your weather better than I know your weather, um, you will need to take steps to protect that new tender, delicate growth. So that either means bringing those containers indoors 
And you know, if you only have a couple containers, that's not going to be a problem. Just bring those containers indoors for the night. Uh, when it warms back up, stick them back outside and let them do their thing. This time of the year here where I live, we don't get a frost every single night. So uh, I can afford to do that little extra step because it's not as much of a hassle. Another option, of course, is to use a frost blanket. There's a frost projected, or I think there might be a frost, or it's getting a little bit cold. What I'll do is I'll go outside and I'll throw a frost blanket on it, and then I will cover the low tunnel right back up. And then when it warms back up, I'll take that frost blanket off. Um, this really is a process of trial and error, and it depends on where you live. But that's kind of the method that I've developed over the last couple of years, and it seems to work really, really well. I know when you say it out loud, it sounds like, oh, that's a lot of work. But uh, depending upon the season, it really is just a matter of covering some things up a couple times. Um, it's nice to not have to, you know, squeeze things in under grow lights and crowd things into a windowsill. It's really, it's really nice to just have it out there, have nature taking care of it. Uh, you will need to watch the soil moisture. Sometimes those container trays can dry out pretty quickly, especially if the weather's warm. So you will want to make sure you're keeping those consistently moist. Of course, not soaking wet, soggy because we don't want our tubers to rot. Um, obviously, we want to keep it nice and warm as well because we don't want tubers sitting in cold soil. Uh, or a lot of this really is you just have to use kind of your own discretion on when the time is going to be right. In general, the time it takes for tubers to begin waking up and starting to grow will vary greatly just depending upon the variety. Sometimes I get tubers that are already actively growing, which I personally like. And sometimes they will take forever to wake up and start growing out of their dormancy. But uh, you just be patient, don't lose hope. As long as you start with healthy tubers, you should get good results. Um, that's really about it for this video. I hope that it was helpful. I'm not quite sure if it was. I'm, I'm really just learning here and hopefully it's helpful to somebody. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to put them down below. Um, I usually try to get to those within a week, um, depending upon my work schedule and how crazy things are. If you're new to the channel and you like the video, please subscribe, hit the little bell icon. We'd love to have you. We're always trying to grow the channel. Sometimes we're growing vegetables, sometimes we're growing flowers. Sometimes we're doing DIY projects. Who knows? Who knows what we're gonna do? Tell your friends, be sure to share with your friends, all that good stuff. Um, I hope that you guys are having such an incredible day and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye guys.